Jalen Johnson wants to be the highest paid DB in the NFL. Should the Chicago Bears do it? And the one scenario where I would absolutely trade Justin Fields. All that and more in today's episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. Let's go. Now, if you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel to talk Chicago sports, how Chicago talk. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. So Jalen Johnson was on Keyshawn Johnson's podcast yesterday and basically was breaking down kind of what he felt his value was, he, among other things, a great interview by Keyshawn Johnson. Really enjoyed uh, hearing from Keyshawn on uh, you know, ask how he was asking questions, what his thoughts on Justin Fields, all those things. Um, but a really good podcast. Check it out. At the end of the day, though, Jalen Johnson talked about where he valued himself as a DB. And he talked about kind of like, why, why wouldn't he view himself as a, as a max player? Why doesn't, why wouldn't he view himself as one of the top paid corners in the NFL? And I think to me, that's the part that's very interesting because, I love that he's changed my mind completely throughout the year. People want to talk about the reasons why Jalen Johnson's success came. Well, you really didn't see the interceptions come until Montez Sweat showed up. You really didn't see him start dominating until Montez Sweat showed up. Yeah, that's how that's how pass rush works. I'm not I'm not faulting Jalen Johnson for finally having a good pass rush in front of him. He's always had the pass breakup numbers. He's always had the coverage numbers. He's always been an elite corner at every area except for one. Now the question is, can you continue to be that guy in every area, including that one with the pressure that the Chicago Bears are now able to get up front? To me, you don't let a 24-year-old uh, walk out the door um, by any means without offering him top type money. I think we need to come back to the table and maybe try to start off at 19 and see where we go from there. Uh, but Jair Alexander, highest paid DB in the NFL right now, 21 million. And I feel like you should be sitting about that range. I actually do. I know there's some people that don't believe that you should pay Jalen Johnson that much, but Jalen Johnson is not only a leader for this team. He's not only an elite DB for this team, but he's a major cog in this defense that keeps things moving smoothly. And we saw in that final game, right? That the defense struggled a lot without him out there. I do think Terrell Smith is very good. I do think that, you know, Tyree Stevenson can take on that number one role, but we saw kind of the difference there. Also, again, a, a game where there was a lack of a pass rush. The Bears still need to improve their pass rush. They still need to go out and get a three technique, but I do think that that is something you can do while still paying Jalen Johnson. The part that makes that a little bit interesting, though, is what does that mean for the future for some of the other pieces on this team? Because that is a lot of money to give to Jalen Johnson, and that's going to take away from your salary cap. You can't go out and pay everybody and draft everybody and sign everybody in free agency. What aren't you going to do? Could we see the Chicago Bears possibly franchise tag Jalen Johnson this season? to be able to pay him next season, uh, try and work something out where they can get a little bit more money off the books. Now, what's probably going to happen is you're going to see some cap casualties here. I think for sure we know Cody White here is done. His time here in Chicago is probably coming to an end. I think this probably also means Eddie Jackson is on the chopping block if the Chicago Bears were to do this, which I don't think many Bears fans would have a, a ton of uh, qualms with, right? But those are the two guys where you get a little bit of money back by cutting them get a little bit of that. Uh, uh, of course, you're going to get hit, <coughs> excuse me, with that dead cap money, but you also get the opportunity then to uh, save a little bit of money on those guys and contribute that towards Jalen Johnson. And and listen, you're probably drafting a, another safety this year. You're making Jaquan Brisker, your number one guy back there. That's, that's probably how it's going to go down. Welcome to the business of the NFL, young man. Like, you're you're in charge now. You know what I mean? And and maybe you could work something out with Bojack at a lower rate uh, and bring him back in here. But I, I doubt it. You know what I mean? I'm, I doubt it. Like, what are we dying to have Bojack? Here? I'd love to have Bojack here as a, as a leader. I think he's a really good leader on this team. But if it opens up the money to allow me to keep a young 
DB who's been elite and is finally able to get the takeaway numbers because that was my issue with him. That was my issue with him. Yeah, you know I mean, like when you talk about getting the takeaways, when you talk about corners, I should say, you don't talk about their pass breakup numbers or uh or I should say only their pass breakup numbers or only their coverage numbers or right like you you talk about them for taking the football away. We hadn't seen Jalen Johnson take the football away but one time up until this point. Now, when you look back at it and you and you sit there and talk about, okay, well, why did we see Jalen Johnson take the football away only one time? Well, he's only had a pass rush one time in his whole career. Now we're starting to see that pass rush come back. Yet the addition of Montez Sweat definitely helps with that. Can you continue to build on that? Maybe get Yannick Ngakwe back in here at a very cheap price because of the injury that he's coming off of. Like, I think there's a lot that the Bears could do here defensively that allow you to re-sign Jalen Johnson and continue to have him in that position. And I think they still have a ton of options open to them. Maybe they throw the transition tag on him and see what everybody else feels about him now that they're probably not going to trade him. Uh, but I do want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know if you believe that Jalen Johnson should be the highest paid DB in the NFL, or do you feel like he falls a little bit below that range? Highest paid is about 21 million right now. That's going to Jair Alexander. That's just year over year, right? Um, and then finally, I mean, listen, it, it's it's there's not much for me. I'm I'm a Justin Fields supporter, Justin Fields fan, like the Justin Fields is here, think that he could develop into a really nice quarterback. So when we talk about trading Justin away not to say my mind's completely closed off to the idea I understand it's a business he's in year three he hasn't shown you enough and uh, that may happen but I'm not sitting here just taking any deal but Mel Kuyper brought up one deal that Ryan Poles would be a fool not to take Mel Kuyper brought up one deal that Ryan Poles I mean, listen, if it's offered to him and the deal hasn't been done yet, you better have a heck of a lot of belief in Justin Fields. Because Mel Kuyper talked about the Atlanta Falcons and their want for Justin, their want to have him here in Chicago, their want to continue to build with, or to, to start to build with Justin Fields and believes that the Chicago Bears can get the eighth overall pick for Justin Fields. Now, listen, you guys heard me yesterday on my rant, def rant uh, uh, defending Justin, defending Chicago Bears fans, talking about, you know, some of the things that Cap had said over on ESPN 1000. Um, and at, at the end of the day, uh, I'm all in on just, I believe that he can be the quarterback of the future for the Chicago bears and that you need to address some of the other holes that you have on this team and it will make him better. I think that you address some of the issues that the offensive line, because I do think there's a lot of issues that are, that are excuses now, right? They're excuses. Now everybody, Oh, I'm tired of the excuses. I've never seen a quarterback get more excuses. It's crazy. These excuses, right? He should be able to navigate having a starting center that snaps football over his head. Excuses. All right, the things that we, we say are excuses now will be the reasons we keep Caleb Williams around for three years. And then we'll be talking about replacing another quarterback if you don't address the excuses. Now, I do believe Ryan Poles will. I just think that's a lot easier to do if you have more draft picks to be able to go out there and address the excuses, right? But if the Atlanta Falcons are dumb enough to give us a third top 10 pick in this draft, and of course, there's going to be some other capital involved in that as well. This is not straight up. You take that pick. You trade Justin Fields. And here's the reason why. Because for a lot of people, they look at the Caleb Williams tape and they're like, I would never take this guy, paints his fingernails, cries to his mind. I could care less about all that. How's he throw the football, right? He's a good football player. We're hearing now a lot more about the leadership issues that are issues. And it seems like a lot of people are saying these are never issues. Like, I don't know why people started this narrative. I don't know why people started spewing this narrative. This guy was great at USC. Everybody in the locker room loved him at USC. Nobody has had a bad thing to say about him. Now that could all be cap, right? But I, I, I hear what people are saying uh, uh, about him when, when you're talking about 
having somebody come in and be a different kind of leader at the quarterback position. And with all of that, right at the end of the day, you're coming into a situation now where you have an entire locker room that's back in Justin Fields, an entire locker room that wants Justin Fields here. It's going to hit them very hard. You have to come in and prove yourself to that locker room right away. Uh, but with all of that, I, I do think Caleb Williams is a good football player. And I think he's coming to a situation here in Chicago where you're not starting on the worst team in the NFL. You're not usually the number one pick, right? You're going in a Bryce Young situation. You're going to stand behind a bunch of like five dudes that just are fat, uh, a running back that's like, all right, he, he runs the football. No wide receivers, your best wide receivers. At all. Like Usually that's the situation you're going to. Caleb Williams is not in that situation. He's going to an offensive line that, yes, doesn't have a ton of issues. Hopefully they'll be addressed in the in the draft here. But, yeah, there's some issues on it. But there's a lot of good pieces on that line as well, right? You look at Tevin Jenkins. You look at Darnell Wright. Those are two good pieces right off the bat. You get the center position right. We can start to figure some things out. You get that left tackle position right. My God, now we're moving in the right direction. So Caleb Williams will be coming into that situation where the Bears are still trying to address some of the holes that they have while still – uh, uh, maintaining a level of excellence on the defensive side, I guess you could say, right? So you're coming in with a defense that's going to put you in good positions. Those are good things for a young quarterback to have. With that on the table, if Atlanta is willing to sit there and say, hey, we'll give you the eighth overall pick for Justin Fields, we'll give you a future second uh, and and a future first, right? Like, if they're willing to say that about Justin Fields, and remember, we had heard through Courtney Cronin that the, the draft capital is very up and down in this situation with Courtney Cronin and Jeremy Fowler. Uh, the draft capital is very up and down in this situation. Everybody, we've heard everything from us. They had heard everything from a second to a fifth for Justin Fields, and it just depends on the belief of Justin with the team. The thing for me that I, that I, uh, uh, um, look at with Justin Fields is okay. If you have somebody giving you a second through a fifth, all right, cool. Right? Like maybe that's something that, but I can get more for the first overall pick than I can for Justin Fields, but you're not going to get more than the eighth overall pick for any of it while still having the first and still having the ninth overall pick three top 10 picks in one draft is how teams fix teams. Three top 10 picks in one draft is how you go about fixing your team. That's how you find multiple long-term players for your team. You make that deal. That is the scenario for me where there, it's not even a question. We're not even taking time. We're not even slowing down. We're making that deal, right? And so that's one to me that does get me a little bit excited. If, I, if I'm if i a Bears fan right now and I hear the eighth overall pick is on the table and Atlanta wants Justin that badly, bet, let's do it. Because Atlanta feels like they're probably a quarterback away. Do you tra just trade for your quarterback? You go get Justin Fields. Now you feel like, and I think he'll do well there. I think you'll probably have a, a coach come in there that's really willing to work with him and do some things there. They won't make the same mistakes the Chicago Bears do because the Chicago Bears are the only people that make these mistakes, right? And he'll go down there and he'll look really good and we'll be sad up here and we'll be like, we well, didn't do that here. Now we're looking at Caleb Williams probably going, why isn't he doing that here? That's just our future. We're Sisyphus, bro. We never get the ball up the mountain. We keep rolling back downhill. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I think that there, if that is a real deal on the table, and listen, nobody else is reporting that except Mel Kuyper. Maybe because Mel Kuyper's reporting that, that kind of tells me a little something. I mean, it's no disrespect to Mel, but like, you're the only one here in eighth overall pick. Like that, that's a little bit surprising. Shefty's not even here in eighth overall pick out here. Yeah. You know I mean, like, I, 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 look, I, if that is on the table, Ryan polls, pick up the phone and get the deal done. And it's no hate on Justin. It's just, you're never going to have a better opportunity to improve this team long-term than by having three top 10 picks in the draft. You're just not. You can still, you could not get Caleb Williams. You could trade back to three, still draft MHJ, have a bunch more picks in the first round uh, uh, for a bunch more future picks. You could have eight and still take a quarterback and Jaden Daniels or maybe a Bo Nix or whatever it is. And you could still go like the top, th top three. Or three top 10 picks? Yeah, no, sign me up. That's a scenario where Justin, thanks for playing the work version of our game. We appreciate you coming through. Um, 
I'd do it if if that's actually on the table. I'd, I'd be all in on it, but let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. I'll be down to talk with you guys as well. As always, it's your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Click the links on the screen to check the links in the description below. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Big Bird done. See y'all later, man. Peace.